Hello and welcome to Stolen From Me. I'm Lindsay and this is your midweek bite-sized episode. Viewer discretion is advised. This week's episode, we're looking into the shocking case of Bernadette Walker. Bernadette Walker was 17 years old. She was described as completely creative in every way. She loved fashion and changing her hair colour. She loved photography. She just really liked expressing herself. Her mother, Sarah Walker, and her stepdad, Scott Walker. He was not her biological dad. And Sarah actually changed her last name by Depole, which is a legal document allowing you to change any part of your name whatsoever. And it will stand forever until you change it again if you want to. Sarah also had eight other children alongside Bernadette. It was said that Scott and Sarah actually split up in 2018. Now, if this is true, this makes this case even more worse than it possibly is. Now, he did continue to live in the same address as them. And even though Sarah had another man, he would still stay in the same house. Jumping forward, on the 21st of July 2020, Cambridgeshire Police received a phone call at 3.30 in the morning. Sarah Walker explained to the call handler that her 17-year-old daughter, Bernadette, known as B, has gone missing and she was last seen on the 18th of July. Her stepdad had collected her from her grandparents' house. She had stayed there the night before due to having an argument with her mother. When Scott, her stepdad, went to pick her up and take her home, they got into an argument in the car, which resulted in B jumping out of the car and running off just up the road from Mount Stephens area near Peterborough. Scott then called up Sarah to explain what happened and then he went home. On the phone call, we hear Sarah explaining to the call handler that she didn't report her daughter missing straight away because she was in fact messaging her daughter. Sarah goes on to say that she knew where her daughter was because B told her that she was around her ex-boyfriends. Then all contact stopped on the 20th of July. She said that she gave B some time to think over what she had done by running away and she told the call handler that this wasn't the first time her daughter had run away from home. When the call handler asked if Sarah had gone round or made any contact with B's ex-boyfriend, she replied no. But her son did in fact message him and he asked her boyfriend or ex-boyfriend if he could pass on a message to B and said that Her mum has been texting her, but she would really like her to call her. Her ex-boyfriend then replied, saying, why would I pass on a message? And her her brother said, well, because you're with B. And he said, well, no, I'm actually not with her at all. Throughout the 30-minute conversation with the call handler, she did press Sarah for information. And Sarah said that she had messaged B's friends to find out where her daughter was. And they said that they wasn't with her. So Sarah then decided to call the police and throughout the call, Sarah was very calm and answered her questions clearly. She even checked her Instagram to see if she could see the last time or when anyone had contact with B. As the call handler take more details about B's disappearance, she actually asked why Scott had argued with her in the car. Sarah replied, I wasn't there. But her dad said something along the lines of, you need to apologise to your mum when you get home. You can't be having this attitude and doing things like this. And then B said, I'm not going home. Scott stopped the car and made a cigarette. And then B jumped out of the car and ran off. Now it is said that Scott then got out of the car. He locked the car and then ran after her, which I find strange. But B was way too fast for him and she got away. The call handler continued to ask more details about B, going on to ask Sarah if B's mood had changed in any way. To this, Sarah replied, In the last few weeks, yes, she has been a bit down, but I put this to the fact about the current times we're in and her college not being open. During the call, Sarah did say that she didn't think of checking hospitals about her missing daughter because she'd already been texting her through text messages, so that didn't even come into play. 
It wasn't just the police that found this case interesting. There was a huge online community that jumped straight onto this case and they did so for months. They were so determined to find out what happened to B and missing posters were put up. There was online web sleuths. Every, everyone got on board this case. They were determined to find B or at least what happened to her. B's case would be classed as minimum risk, like I say, for the next seven weeks. And because an officer who was looking after the case looked at this case seven times, he didn't see anything more than minimum risk to this case. But this would then change as another officer was put in charge of the case and he would upgrade it to high risk. The police then conducted a search on the family home, in particular B's room. And they also had a little chat with Scott along the way. Two days later, a homicide investigation team took particular interest in the disappearance of B. They did think that the parents were suspects. Now, what really did happen to B? Let's have a look. 17-year-old Bernadette Walker reached out to her mum for help. She bravely opened up and told her mum that her stepdad, Scott Walker, had allegedly been violating her over a period of seven years. She explained that Scott had put a camera up in the bathroom to watch her undress and he also had one in the bedroom, but that was not confirmed. He did say that he put it up because she was hiding sweet wrappers, which I find strange. Now, sadly, B thought her mum would protect her. Like almost all mums, not all of them, but most, would always protect their children. But B's mum, the 38-year-old Sarah Walker, didn't even listen. She didn't take anything in her daughter was saying. She just had a full-blown argument with her, stating that she does not believe what she was saying. And B had to go stay with Scott's parents for the night. This was the 17th of July. B went round her grandparents. On Saturday, the 18th of July, Scott Walker went to pick up B which I also find strange. Now, he went to his parents' house to pick her up, but before he did this, he stopped off at a local lockup and garage where he kept all his sort of items. When he arrived at his parents' home at 10.40am, they told him that B was still maintaining that he allegedly violated her from a young age. B and Scott then drove off in his car. This was the last time anyone ever saw B again. He would later tell the court that he pulled over to have a cigarette and confront B about the claims, but she ran off out of the car, leaving her backpack in the car. He chased her, but she was too fast. Now, we know that bit isn't true, but the police do believe that on the way home, Scott did stop at the countryside. His phone was located at the countryside. And this is where the police believed that he murdered B. His phone signal showed that he was on the outskirts of Peterborough and his phone was turned off for exactly 91 minutes. Scott then called up, unbelievably, Sarah, B's mum. And they had a nine minute conversation on the phone. He told her what he had done. He told her that he murdered her daughter and then he asked her for help. B's mother then helped him come up with a story intending to throw everybody off the case. Now, Scott and Sarah then lied to friends and family and the police about what had happened. Scott and Sarah visited the lockup again, and then Scott then went on to further go to the lockup again throughout like the next couple of days, basically. While Sarah and Scott was at the lockup, B's mobile phone was connected to a network at the time, and it said that Scott's and Sarah's mobile phone signal was in the same location as B's. At 6.30, Sarah is believed to have topped up her daughter's phone. Scott would then call B's phone and leave it open for 33 seconds. Sarah then hacked into her daughter's social media accounts soon after the disappearance slash murder, including changing her password immediately after receiving a phone call from Scott, 
Sarah found B's mobile, which was left in her room and hacked into her email and accessed all of her accounts, including her college, her Instagram, everything. Sarah claims that she did this to prevent people from finding out about the allegations against Scott. It said that B's friends were suspicious of the messages that Sarah was sending them, pretending to be B, because this just didn't sound like their friends, so they were a bit suspicious. Sarah sent messages to her own phone, pretending to be B, apologising for making up the whole abuse allegations. It's also said that B's friends became suspicious of the text messages that they received, apparently from B, because it didn't sound like their normal text messages she would send. Sarah also sent a message to her own phone, pretending to be B, apologising for making up allegations against Scott. She also sent messages to B's friends saying that she had run away because she had lied. Sarah would later tell the police that Scott told her to send these false messages. Seven weeks after B was confirmed missing, her parents was arrested. The Bedford, Cambridgeshire and Hertfordshire Major Crime Unit started a no-body murder investigation. The trial had heard how Scott and Sarah Walker formed an unholy alliance to cover up B's death. When the jury delivered the verdict of Scott Walker's murder charges, Sarah Walker wailed out loud, saying, No, no, she's not dead. And then the hearing was paused for a brief time before the jury went back to deliberate against her verdict. Sarah had already admitted to two accounts of Puffet in the course of justice by sending messages to B's phone after she was last seen and by also providing false information to the police relating in her disappearance. The court heard how she disappeared on July the 18th, and since her stepdad picked her up, she has not been seen active on any social media, which is strange because she used to be on it all the time. No money has gone out of her bank, no access to anything she was on. She hasn't been to hospitals, doctors, nothing. There's been no sighting, no anything, no contact, nothing with friends or family since the 18th of July. The prosecution did say that they believe that Scott Walker killed B to prevent her pursuing any allegations of abuse in the future. They also heard in court how his phone was switched off for 91 minutes and that's when they believe that he murdered her. They said that they lied to everyone around him about B's disappearance and they unflinched their pursuit of devilish and wicked plans. Now for her mother to stick up for her partner instead of her daughter is truly wicked. Her rucksack was actually found inside the locker, and also this included her diary. B had written something to tell her mum about the abuse. She wrote, I told my mum about my dad and the abuse. She called me a liar and threatened to kill me if I ever went to the police. What kind of parent wouldn't believe their own daughter? Sarah was found guilty of preferring the course of justice on two accounts by a majority vote, knowing and believing Bernadette was dead. And Scott Walker was found guilty of killing 17-year-old Bernadette Walker at Cambridge Crown Court despite there being never any body found. Scott Walker was found guilty on two accounts of perverting the course of justice as well. Now the police said, my plea to anyone that has been subject to any kind of abuse to speak up, to come forward and to be confident. Not all mothers act like this, so please speak up if anyone is going through anything like this. She trusted her own mother and that was completely the wrong thing to do and she didn't know that. She thought she was going to be protected and it was just completely tragic how it ended. To this day, Bernadette's body, like I said, has never ever been found and the police are hoping one day Scott will do the right thing and say where he disposed of her deceased body. No one knows to this day how he murdered her. I believe that Scott and Sarah will be sentenced on the 10th of September this year. They haven't actually been given how long they're going to serve in prison. 
I really hope it's a really long time. But like we always see, it's never long enough. Thank you so much for listening to this week's Bite Size episode. I really try to keep it under 10 minutes and I've only done two episodes and failed on both attempts. There is a lot more information on this case if anyone is interested then Google is the best place to go. There is so much information on this case. It could probably have been a 30-minute episode. But like I say, I have so many other cases I want to cover that I'm trying to fit them all in where I can. So that's it until Sunday. I wish you all a wonderful week and take care. Much love, Lindsay. Lindsay.